rapid-fire weapons have become popular today, and people are no longer excessively pursuing shooting speed, but rather more focused on shooting accuracy. However, one or two hundred years ago, people were precisely pursuing the high firing rate of cannons to compensate for the lack of ammunition power. The Williams Rapid Fire Cannon was a type of cannon built and put into service by the United States in 1861. Compared to most cannons at that time, this cannon had an astonishing firing rate of 20 rounds per minute. In an era where there were still many muzzle-loading cannons, this cannon was simply the machine gun of the artillery world. Its excellent firing rate won unanimous praise from the artillery. The cannon had a caliber of 1.57 inches, about 40 millimeters, and a barrel length of about 1.2 meters. Like other similar small caliber cannons at the time, this cannon was also mounted on a wheeled carriage and belonged to the category of light artillery. It could be easily towed by mules or even moved short distances by manpower. Although it was a high-speed weapon, contrary to what you may imagine, this cannon did not use fixed ammunition. Instead, it achieved the sliding, unlocking, and locking of the barrel through a structure controlled by a handle. One complete unlocking and locking firing process was completed by rotating the handle on the right side once. During use, a gunner would move the handle halfway, causing the breech to slide backward and open. During this time, a loader would insert the projectile and the paper-wrapped propellant into the breech. Then, they would place a percussion cap on the ignition hole on the left side of the cannon, and a series of simple structures, such as springs, would move under the drive of the handle. The second half of the handle's rotation would complete the locking of the barrel, and the hammer would strike the percussion cap under the action of the spring, thus completing a shot. With this simple device, the Williams Rapid Fire Cannon could achieve rapid firing even without fixed ammunition. A skilled crew could fire at a super rate of 20 rounds per minute, faster than rifles at the time. It could unleash a dense barrage on infantry lining up for an attack from over a thousand meters away. I believe any infantryman at the time would fear this cannon. The maximum range of the cannon was 2,000 meters, with an effective range of about 1,000 meters. With its small projectile mass, it was difficult to use in artillery battles, but it was an absolute weapon for defensive battles or field battles. It was like a bamboo skewer piercing a candied hawthorn on a stick, and soldiers' flesh and blood were unable to withstand it. The Williams Rapid Fire Cannon was authorized for service in September 1861 and participated in combat in May of the following year. Its first appearance was in the Battle of Seven Pines, where it performed outstandingly. Although there were few in number, it inflicted significant casualties on the Union Army. Subsequently, the military issued some orders, but the total production was not high, with only about 40 to 50 cannons. Although the performance of the Williams Rapid Fire Cannon was good, its flaws were also evident. Due to the locking structure of the cannon, the barrel could not withstand high pressure, and the power of the handle was limited by manpower. Therefore, the caliber of the cannon could not be enlarged, and solid shot projectiles were mainly used, with a power roughly equivalent to a one-pound cannon. Although the firing rate of the cannon was high, it was limited by the technology of the propellant at the time. After continuous firing, the residual material in the barrel needed to be cleaned, and the barrel would overheat, requiring a soldier to pour water on it to cool it down. The smoke from the gunpowder and the steam from the water seriously affected the aiming and shooting of the cannon. Most importantly, this cannon was too expensive. Regardless of the selling price of the cannon, just from the cost perspective, the cost of a rifle at the time was about $3. At that time, $1 was worth a lot, and based on the level of the 1870s, $1 could buy about 1.5 grams of gold, while the cost of a Williams Rapid Fire Cannon was $325. The cost of purchasing a cannon could almost arm a small infantry squad, and the military budget simply couldn't support it. As an excellent cannon, the Williams Rapid Fire Cannon did not exist for long and did not receive further improvements. The main reason was that the cannon was only a clever improvement on old technology.
Compared with breech-loading cannons with fixed ammunition, it was still lagging behind. The two had fundamental differences in technology, 